Um, a lot of your recent work has also garnered regional and national attention. Um, some of that work involves the role of bees in land reclamation project. Can you tell me a little bit about how that got started and, and how that's going? So in, in 19, uh, 2007, I was the National Endowment of Humanities Chair of Appalachian Studies at Berea College. And I took that year and, and, and went to South Africa and I went to Australia and I just looked at their mining laws. I wanted to look at coal mining laws because if you're going to change something, you have to understand federal legislation first. And in these other countries, I noticed that there were subtle, subtle differences in the wording. Uh, in Australia in particular, um, when they have, a, when a coal company uh, decides that it's going to mine land, for instance, uh, what they what they do is agree to a to return the land to original approximate use. In the United States, the coal companies have to agree to return the land to original approximate contour. In the United States, by contrast, when we require coal companies to to, to return the land to original approximate contour, that's you know I could go out and, and build a landfill and not get at the genetic diversity that existed prior to the mining. It's, it's more expensive to reach a topographical line. It doesn't do anything, in other words, except create a false standard and an expensive standard that, that is more about measuring paperwork, it seems mm -hmm. to me. So I wanted to you know, some of these mine sites are 3,000 acres. And, and I wanted to figure out a way to use the federal laws so that we could get at more responsible reclamation and, and, and in some way get at restoring the genetic diversity of trees that we had prior to that mine use. And that meant having to go overseas. And that meant immersing myself in mind cultures in other places besides just Kentucky, you know. Uh, it, it, it's, it, and it seems to me like ideally, you know, what I want from this project is, is, that, is that we amend the 1977 Surface Mining Control Reclamation Act so that, that, so that we are agreeing for companies to return that land to original proximate use. That we get that word contour out there, you know, because it's a false, it's a, it's a false standard, it seems to me. Apart from your work and research in the fields, I also noticed um, that you have a strong commitment to teaching and a strong commitment to teaching people about bees. Um, you have a series of workshops, and one of them I was fascinated with is entitled Girls and Bees. Can you tell me a little bit about how these workshops are structured and why this work is important to you? So the, the, um, the Girls and Bees program is, uh, has been bankrolled by the Kentucky Foundation for Women. That particular foundation was started by Sally Bingham of the Courier-Journal family, and what I wanted to do with that was to put a female face to beekeeping in, in Appalachian region, which is my home, uh, that in my mind had not been there since my grandmother was a beekeeper. You know, most of the time when people think of a beekeeper, they think of an older white male. And they would be right because the demographics of beekeeping is precisely all of those factors. But if we are going to set up a honey industry in Eastern Kentucky, then I want that to be an, a, an equitable industry. And women were beekeepers, have been beekeepers for centuries. In fact, my second book is about women in beekeeping. And it's important to me um, that, the, that the young women and young girls 
begin to see themselves as scientists, you know, and that's what beekeepers are. You have to know chemicals, you have to know botany, you know, you have to know soil analysis. And all of these things then can be the formation of a fascinating career. And, and I don't think at this point in time that there's enough leadership in our state urging women to consider beekeeping as a science-based career. So I want to put a face to that. Great, great. On a related note, you also involve students in your research. Can you tell me a little about what students bring to the research and what research brings to your students? So I think first and foremost, because beekeeping by and large is, con is comprised of a demographic of older males. You know, students bring a, a, a youth, an enthusiasm, uh, you know, regardless of the gender, right? I mean, there, 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 there's strength, there's enthusiasm, there's a, a curiosity. Um, I think that, f for the record, I mean, that's not just something that's contained to students. I mean, I also have non-traditional students. I guess maybe we need to start there because non-traditional students are also a part of the people I reach. Um, but with young, the conventional student, um, for them, it's, it's uh, it, to quote Kurt Vonnegut, when, they, when we open a hive, they see divine reason governing the universe, all right? And, and to, to see that look on a student's face is, is you know, that's, that's what you want. You know, you want to help them see, ultimately, that there is divine reason governing the universe. And they have a part in that. And, and bees need for them to be involved with that more than ever, now more than ever. You know, when our stats, when our national stats are that we lose one in every three beehives, we need young people. We need non-traditional students. We need single moms, we need unemployed workers, we need disillusioned workers who are no longer being counted by our employment statistics. Uh, you know, we need, we need these people who, um, even as, as, as policy analysts are telling us that the recession is over, are having a much different experience. You know, we have a national agricultural crisis on our hands that we haven't had since the Dust Bowl. And we need those people to be beekeepers. Well, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed our conversation today. This has been very fascinating. <laughs> so, thanks. Uh, that's it for today's edition of Focus on Scholarship. I'd like to again thank our guest, Tammy Horn, and invite you to read Bees in America, How the Honey Bee Shaped a Nation. You can find copies in the John Grant Crab Library. Please join us next time as we continue our series of webcasts celebrating the scholarly and creative achievements of our faculty and staff at Eastern Kentucky University.